All right, everyone. Good morning. My name is Amar Preet Kalkat. I'm the founder of Humanity AI. Uh, some of you have had the pleasure to interact with in the past, and uh, many of you not. So thank you for joining in today. So our, uh, uh, let me first tell you a little bit. So this is, you know, we're kicking off a new series of um, sessions that we will be hosting going forward on a monthly basis. Uh, this is the first of those sessions. And uh, we'll continue doing uh, sessions that are essentially educational in nature, which help our users, our to be users, or generally anyone interested in using uh, personality insights effectively uh, for selling. So these sessions will continue. We'll also start hosting more sessions uh, with industry leaders, uh, with some of our advanced expert users, uh, which help you learn more about uh, personality AI, personality insights, how it's being leveraged, what are the best practices, what are some of the examples emerging. So today uh, is the starting point. So there's a lot more that is to come. But thank you for joining uh, me on this one today. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to effectively use uh, personality intelligence that humanity provides. Uh, for your day-to-day -day work. So I assume most of the people here uh, are from sales teams or uh, business teams. Uh, some people might be on the BDR org side, STR org side. Some people might be in closing roles. So we'll try to cover both, you know, some of the points that I intend to take up today. They apply, um, you know, in a agnostic manner, I would say, uh, in a role agnostic manner. And uh, there are some points that are specific uh, to the roles. So we'll be taking up uh, both of those. So before we uh, go deep into how to, how to win consistently, consistently as it says, so quick uh, reminder, Humantic AI, uh, we are a, a personality insights tool. We are um, we used by both uh, BDR and AE teams for helping them connect effectively with their customers. So anyone who's been in selling uh, for long enough knows that if there's one truth uh, to selling, the truth is that people buy from those that they trust. So that establishing that trust, establishing that connection is critically important. So for any salesperson to succeed at what they do, it is important, critically important that you have a relationship with your prospect where they trust you. It doesn't matter whether you are a PDR outbounding, sending out an email to someone, uh, calling someone over the phone, so you're still trying to establish that level of trust uh, that allows the prospect to say, okay, I'll pause everything that I'm doing for a moment uh, to speak to you. And of course, as you move along uh, through the sales process, it, it keeps on becoming more and more important uh, as you move towards the final stages where you're trying to close a business. Uh, it's a buyer's market today, as we all know very well. The buyer has a million options. There's always you know, competition. There's always uh, other possible uh, options that are available. So how do you establish that relationship? How do you establish that connection? That is what Humantic AI helps you do. So I think we all know this, but uh, it, it's something that we uh, can never stress enough. Uh, it is just natural for all of us as salespeople to start thinking and looking at our buyers in terms of uh, personas, in terms of roles even. It happens naturally. So because we just so often we talk about what's the buyer persona? Who's my buyer? Oh, you know, this is my buyer is for us. It might be CROs, you know, it might be, uh, you know, VP uh, sales or, you know, VP uh, revenue operations, for example. So we end up 
taking a very, a very narrow view of who's on the other side of the table. But what's really important to remember at any point of time is ultimately it's all people, right? So it doesn't matter what the designation is. It doesn't matter what the role is, but fundamentally it's people. Fundamentally people are emotional. Fundamentally whatsoever level of logic we might be uh, talking about, we might be bringing to the table, but a very, very large part of any decision tends to be uh, tends to be emotional. So that human connection hence becomes very important and to establish that connection, we want to make sure that we understand who these people are, what makes these people unique, what makes these people different from each other. And accordingly, we try to establish um, the relationship accordingly, we try to uh, get a, find a starting point that sets us on the right path. Now, we'll spend a few minutes here. So all of us uh, have a certain kind of personality. Uh, all of us have a certain temperament. We are certain kind of individuals. So for example, uh, you know, what you see on my screen here, uh, those of you who already use Humantic and some of you who do not uh, use Humantic, uh, you will quite likely be familiar with the DISC framework. So the DISC framework is a personality uh, assessment framework. Uh, DISC uh, stands for dominance, influence, steadiness, and uh, calculativeness, or sometimes it's called conscientiousness. So it's a framework uh, to understand an in individual's personality. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what, what it, each word means. So the words themselves I've seen you know, can be misleading unless you're familiar with what, what the framework is. But people who are high on D, the dominance attribute, they typically tend to be very direct. They tend to be very goal-oriented. These are the people always in a hurry and they just want to get you know, to the results. They want to accomplish more and more. The I types, the influences, as it's said, so these are the people who are uh, very sociable. They, they are very people-oriented. So uh, doesn't always mean that they will be extroverted, but generally, you know, they tend to be extroverted. So these, these are the people uh, that you, the friendly types, you know, the wine and dine types, etc. So that's the I types, if we broadly look at that. The S stands for steadiness. These are the calm, thoughtful, composed people, uh, never too excitable. And uh, you know they go about doing their things in a methodical manner. And C, calculativeness is, is what, we, what we call it. It's also called conscientiousness sometimes. So these are typically very analytical uh, kind of people. Now, no one is necessarily purely a D or an I or an S or a C. So everyone has some percentage of all of these attributes. So there's also more beyond this. You know, we also assess people on a second personality assessment framework that's called Big Five. So that captures a separate dimensions of an individual's personality. But we'll focus on DISC. DISC is uh, the most popular framework from a uh, communication design perspective. How do we communicate with someone? Uh, what is it that we need to be doing or saying to establish a positive relationship, good rapport versus, uh, versus not? So we'll, we'll focus more on this here. So everyone scores to a certain level on each of these four attributes. But for a majority of people, uh, one or two attributes tend to be either major or major enough. So for a smaller number of people, now it's accepted that you could have three major attributes, for example. So you have a, let's say a multidimensional you know, personality uh, and depending upon the situation, you, you could uh, be a bit more of this type or that type. But for a majority of people, it's, you know, 
single or two dimensions. So we'll mostly stick with those examples today. What happens here is, let's assume for, for you know, uh, the purposes of uh, um, you know, example here, that you are someone who's a type DC. A DC type is typically a very analytical, uh, fast uh, person who's always in a hurry, but uh, always has hundreds of questions, uh, typically uh, doesn't agree easily, is very hard to convince, uh, extremely methodical, extremely analytical, even you could say cynical to a degree. So these are people who find it very hard to trust something. So they combine the D and C elements. The D element uh, is all about you know, achieving your results and not bothering for anything else. C is being very analytical. So some of the leaders that you'll see and we'll you know, soon take some examples uh, that that's something that I want to spend uh, time on today. So assume, imagine for a minute that you are someone who's a you know, type DC. Now what happens is usually we tend to work effectively with other people who have the same personality type. So if I am a type DC, I am likely to be more effective with DC types because there is inherent compatibility. There is inherent um, connection it's easy for us to understand each other, right? We spoke about uh, the connection being uh, very, very important. So think of that as your kind of sphere of compatibility. But that does also mean that there is an even larger sphere of incompatibility. So these are people that are different than you. These are people who think differently, who behave differently. And that becomes the basis of conflict often enough. Uh, I'll give you uh, an example here. My personality type otherwise, you know, is a type DS. So I am fast, uh, but I generally don't start out very fast. I, I'm a slow starter. Uh, if you ask my wife, she'll probably say that's exactly true on, or maybe she'll actually say, I am not just a slow starter, we, I'm only slow. But anyway, that's, that's a separate point. So my type is DS. And um, just yesterday, uh, we were on an email thread after a couple of calls, you know, with a, uh, you know, with a prospect. So where there is a pilot uh, that has started off and the prospect, the key stakeholder, the main stakeholder on the prospect team side is a type IS. So the IS type is very different than the DS type, although there's S common, but S is generally not a strong trait. DI, they are strong traits. And uh, now, the, you know, we had some back and forth in terms of they're trying to run a test but they're running a test in a manner that, uh, as per me, uh, or factually speaking, is actually not effective because uh, you know, the test needs to be done differently. So my response to them was saying, hey, can you send us, one is this is not how you should be running this test because you're essentially trying to use a proxy. You, know, you should not be using a proxy. So um, without getting into specifics, but can you give us the data? You know, you need to submit the data uh, so that our team can take a look at that data. And that person's coming to me is coming from a very, very different point of view because that person's coming from a point of view where uh, I would see that as you know, beating around the bush. So not getting to the point because what we need to see is the data. And if there's no data, then how do we really even move forward? Whereas for that person, uh, that is not how they see the situation, right? So they see the situation as something that needs to be uh, discussed where they want to understand a few things. The data can probably come later. And uh, I had to pull in uh, one of my teammates uh, who's a type DI. So 
Uh, and you know, just today we had that conversation. Uh, he's actually on the call. You might see the name. His name is Shivang. So I said, Shivang, why don't you take the lead on this conversation? Because if I keep the lead on this one, it's inherently going to move towards a conflict rather than resolution of the conflict. So that's what starts happening often enough. If you pause for a second and uh, think about your last three or five conversations, you'll realize that there have been conversations that have gone beautifully, that have gone smoothly. You come out of that meeting and you're like, oh, I nailed this one. This was great. This was really good. And there would be conversations where you'll come out and say, it didn't really work. This was not great. This didn't really come together. Now, it's entirely possible. Uh, all of us have good days and bad days. It's entirely possible it's a good day or a bad day, uh, either for you know, uh, you or, uh, you know, for the other person in the meeting. But if you look at the data, and now with Humantic, you have the data. If you go back to Humantic, take a look at their personality. Chances are uh, that you'll notice some differences. You'll notice that you were essentially different kind of people. You never really hit off. You never really connected effectively because they were looking at the situation differently. You were looking at the situation differently. So often enough that happens. So I would say, uh, please take it up as an exercise that you can do once you go back you know, from this call. Uh, look up your last five meetings that you've had. Uh, see which of these meetings as per you went well, uh, which of the meetings didn't go well. And then check out the humantic profile of those people. So we have in fact, uh, Exactly for this reason, because this is valuable, we've recently introduced a feature called compatibility with you. Let me quickly bring it up here. Let's see if I have. Right. So let's just take up Shi Wang here. This is what you'll see. So this is a new feature. If you've not used Humantic for the last couple of weeks, this came in just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, this is uh, what you will be seeing. What that person is like, uh, what exactly, how compatible, you know, they are with you. So, and accordingly, what kind of action you need to take. So, so this is a new feature that we have launched here. Now, let's just go back. We'll come back to this. You know, like I said, very soon, I'll be moving to examples. That is the uh, main point of today's uh, session. So talk through examples. Yeah, so Humantic um, is a tool that you can use across sales stages. And um, um, we'll, we'll not go into the full sales funnel as it happens, you know, so typically you'll start with an um, ICP and you'll then of course, you know, move from ICP to uh, selecting the prospects and then prospecting, uh, closing, et cetera. So we'll, we'll make a little bit of, you know, edits over there, but um, uh, these are the five points that I like to cover today. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take up some examples uh, for all of these points, which I think will help you uh, more clearly understand exactly how you should be using Humantic. Chances are those of you who are advanced users are already using it effectively enough but quite possibly there should be some learnings uh, coming out of uh, this session today. Uh, if you're new to personality insights, if you're new to Humantic AI, then I think uh, you know, it's, it should be a no brainer in terms of how well uh, you can use Humantic AI after this session. So, so let's, start, let's start with learning. Uh, what do I mean by learning? By learning, I mean that using Humantic AI to learn more about what makes you effective, where you are effective, and how can you be better? So that, how would we do that? Let's can go to an example here. Yeah, so now I spoke about, you know, my personality type as an individual. Now, let me show you something interesting. This is an analysis of our you know, uh, users. So now we see that the DS type is actually the 
personality type that most often converts for us. It converts, <clears throat> excuse me, four X more than the average. So, which is, which is splendid, right? So it gives us the kind of a personality that is going to buy a product more often. We can focus on them. We can allocate more resources to pursuing uh, these leads, these opportunities, because we know that they tend to buy our product more often. But very interestingly, uh, when I sat down to think about that, because we were trying to build a persona in terms of who likely buys from us. And uh, one thing I couldn't help but notice was the personality type buying most often from us was the same type that I have, as I mentioned. So, and as I just was speaking about it a minute ago, all of us, we have, you know, our zones of compatibility. There are just certain kind of people that I'm compatible with. So as some of you know, right, you know, we've, we've been recently expanding uh, our team. And uh, for that matter, if anyone is out there looking at jobs, we, we are hiring very, very actively. So we've recently raised, uh, you know, a round of funding, uh, teams in expansion mode. But till around three, four months ago, it was essentially me leading sales for Humantic AI. So now two plus two comes together. It's, it's not uh, hard to imagine that at least some part of our success with that DS type was probably because that is the type of personality that I as a salesperson inherently connect with and I'm therefore effective with. But the other types, yes, there are some types, you know, uh, if I am let us say somewhere here, I am going to be some, you know, somewhat compatible with the D type, someone compatible with, you know, maybe the S types, et cetera, et cetera. But they, that, that is my zone of compatibility. Beyond that, I start becoming a little less effective. I start becoming a little less compatible. And that actually would play a role in determining our success with certain kind of people. So that's one part. There are two parts to it. The, you know, the other part of it is, of course, that certain personality types tend to be early adopters. You know, that's been uh, you know, written about uh, often enough as well. So they tend to be early adopters and certain types tend to be laggards. That is true. But uh, when we, and we typically our customers, uh, you know, the kind of analysis I showed you, they will typically do that analysis with Humantic AI when they're trying to fine tune their you know, buyer personas. And uh, we don't always see the same results. The results always differ, right? So in our case, it might be the type DS that's most successful for someone else. We were looking at some data yesterday, it was the type DI that was most successful. D types will very, very often, uh, you know, be the ones that are the most successful because they, they tend to be early adopters in general. So this is point one that I like to make about using Humantic AI to learn more about yourself, learn more about your customers, who you are impactful with and why it might just be actually a natural, um, you know, natural thing that's happening. And if you're aware of that, then it becomes easy enough for you now to be more cognizant with the other types. You know? So when you, for example, see someone's Humantic uh, profile, and you notice that they have a very different personality type, uh, because you are aware of this, you can now choose to put in more effort into that relationship, into building that uh, connection, into understanding, and Humantic's there to help you. So in understanding those people effectively so that you, know, uh, you are indeed building a stronger connection with them as well, even though naturally you might not be that compatible. So I'll pause there. Let me make sure that there are no questions. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, please don't wait for the end. Normally, you know, we run out of time. Uh, we want to, uh, I, I think our team sent out one hour, but, uh, you know, we want to keep it to 45 minutes. I, I think that should be good enough unless we have a lot of questions. So please uh, type your questions in the chat window. 
Um, our team is keeping an eye, so I will be taking them up. And um, I'll probably pause at the end of every example. I intend to take you know, three or four more examples. So uh, yeah, we can take up those questions alongside rather than waiting for the very end. So I'll pause here for a second if there are any questions. Uh, otherwise, we'll move on to the next one. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Um, so we started by learning more about ourselves, you know, where we are successful, where we are less successful, where we need to put in less effort because it's natural, where we need to put in more effort because um, it is not going to come naturally. So next we move to uh, selecting. So when we say selecting, not, um, we won't always have the luxury of, you know, being able to select uh, who are we working with, you know, who are we selling to, but in some cases we do. So that's a corollary of, you know, what we've been discussing so far uh, in terms of uh, how I am as an individual. Now, uh, it's very easy for me to take a look at someone's personality type. Let's, uh, you know, just go to, um, you know, LinkedIn for a second. Uh, like I said, if you are a humantic user, then you already know this interface. If not, then, uh, you know, I'll spend a second here. So at the bottom of the Chrome extension, you know, you'll see this personality type of the individual. So this should very easily help you uh, pick and choose if you have that luxury. Uh, sometimes you don't have that luxury to pick and choose, but if you have that luxury to see, okay, what is quickly the personality type of this person? So we recently again introduced uh, earlier, it'll just tell you DI, we recently uh, introduced this visual representation that also gives you an idea of, um, um, what their overall personality is, not just, you know, what type they are, what, you know, that's called the archetype. So not just the archetypes, but also the overall, because sometimes what happens is, and I think it'll come up, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's see one or two more. So uh, <clears throat> let's see what else we can take up here. Uh, let us say we were, you know, selling something to uh, Grish, who's the founder of Freshworks. Now, if you see here, Girish has a very interesting personality, right? So he's a very high type IS. And uh, if some of you have interacted with Girish, you'll, you'll probably know this. Uh, it, so he scores, scores extremely low actually on the type DC, but scores very, very high on the IS side. So this gives you an idea of what kind of a person that is. And when I speak about selecting, what, what you can do here is you can see what are the types that are you likely to be compatible with and therefore have a higher chance of succeeding with? So, and accordingly, you can pick those types that you're likely to be more effective with. So for example, uh, if I was speaking to some sales leaders, now, uh, you know, Max is someone where it might be easier, you know, for me to uh, build a connection because we have, you know, more similarities uh, in our personality. We have more compatibility you know, in, in our personality, as you can see, it's kind of, you know, through this graph here, although his DNS attributes are stronger than mine, but uh, they're on similar dimensions. So that's a small example of selecting. I think the ones that I want to spend a little bit more time actually is, uh, you know, the next three, the prospecting, uh, you know, following, prospecting and closing probably where I want to spend the most time, uh, you know, following up. Uh, I, I didn't want to put up here because I thought we'll keep everything, uh, in a pattern so but that's essentially following up so so let's move to prospecting i think this is uh, this is an interesting one um and i'll talk about how you can do some things that uh, even if you're using humantic AI already for prospecting you might not be using it exactly in the same manner so i'll, I'll give you some you know tips and tricks uh you know from this session so let's go back to let's go back to the personality scores that we were looking at. So uh, let's take up, uh, I'm going to stick with, you know, just some of the founders. Uh, many of us probably know uh, these people. So they're easy, easy examples. Let's look at Amit. Amit is the founder of Kong. If you see here now, Amit is, shows up as type DI. So 
the di types these are uh these are you could say your quintessential um charismatic leaders so many uh, you know business leaders um tend to be type you know d is very very common across leaders but uh, you'll see a unit you know distribution of di's uh, dss dcs etc often enough so di's are people who are very charismatic uh, these are people you know they can very very easily connect with people they they you know they they have that positivity and they're always you know um in high energy mode uh, etc so now this is uh, and i'll i'll take an example here of a prospect that i interacted with recently so this prospect was a type di but uh, slightly different than amit uh, you know it was what we call you know lower d and capital i which means essentially high on the i quotient d is there but not not at present as strongly so largely a type i now the type i is tend to be uh, they are the nice uh, happy uh, you know very very easy to connect with people very uh, generally not very formal right so uh, these are the people that uh, normally would be most open you know open to uh, grabbing a drink together you know getting a dinner together etc cetera, etc cetera. so i had a chance to meet uh, you know a prospect a head of sales at a fast growing series c kind of a startup uh, who was uh, largely like i said you know di but type largely a type i and uh, uh, we were introduced and uh, we set up a meeting and a day before the meeting the gentleman shifted the me meeting you know from his office to actually a restaurant you know close by so uh, usually you know uh, common indicator like i said of uh, that kind of you know i kind of personality so we meet for lunch over there and we have a fantastic absolutely fantastic conversation i'm talking about prospecting here as an example right and so here we are talking about humantic um and the gentleman here uh, shared some examples with me he told me about a company that he used to be at you know as as a in early days of his career you know way back i think early 2000s and how they had conducted a session a two day workshop uh, around uh, selling uh, in a in a human manner and he was telling me essentially how uh, that workshop has stayed fresh in his mind and how what we are doing uh, is exactly on those lines what i mean to say is we had a fantastic conversation fantastic conversation and um, as a sales person now at the end of that conversation i might be very excited about how well that is going to go but that's that's the tip that i want to share with you that when you are uh, working based on the personality of the person that you're seeing here so now if you are talking about someone who's high on i the high i types typically tend to be positive people their chances of them being negative fairly low they they'll not say no easily so they tend to be um they tend to be people who uh, would strongly um strongly uh, support if not always agree that you know they will strongly support what you have to say essentially these are the these are the glass half full kind of people so now as a sales person what i can use humantic here for is to set my expectations a little bit realistically so because humantic tells me that for that kind of a personality type uh, they are quite likely to almost get ahead of themselves right so uh, you know and that's their intention is not to mislead you but that is just how they are naturally as people so you know for me it's a good place to learn that i take those you know what's been discussed the promises that might be you know getting made with a pinch of salt because that is their nature so that is how you can use uh, personality ai uh, during prospecting even when you get those calls which seem to be going extremely well wonderfully well uh, you know where you might need to take it with a pinch of salt or not or vice versa so i'm talking about a type i here if you instead of type i you were talking about 
uh, a type C, chances are that you know they what they're saying is lagging behind where their actions might go, you know, tomorrow. So that is their inherent style, that is their inherent personality, that they would um, almost hold back in terms of what they tell you and the promises that they make. So I'll again quickly pause here. Okay, no questions, I'll just grab some water. And um, yeah, so let's move to the next one. Um, I'll try to cover the next two in the um, next five, seven minutes. So following up, I think, you know, we'll not spend a lot of time on this one, but, um, you know, following up is almost uh, an art in itself. Uh, what is too much and what is too less? Uh, where do you uh, pick up the phone and where do you send an email and where do you drop a LinkedIn message? Right, so those those things, uh, you know, that, that's often a question that comes uh, to our mind. So, how we are as people, you know, sort of plays a role in uh, how we will react. Uh, of course, it also goes down to what kind of a connection we have with them already. So that's always, uh, you know, going to you know play a part. Um, but their personality does uh, describe uh, how they might be reacting to something. Now, let us take. Let's take, uh, for example, if he just stay here with Amit, you know, for a minute. So he's a type DI. And informal approach to following up could be very effective. So that could be a text message. That could be um, an impromptu unplanned phone call. Chances are they're going to be okay with that. You know, so if they're not available, they'll tell you they're not available. But, uh, you know, chances of them taking it negatively are fairly low. Uh, instead, if you were, let us say, talking to, um, let's take Aaron here. Aaron scores as a type, I think DC, if I'm not wrong. Okay, it's type D. So it's Aaron scores as a type D. Um, type D for that kind of a follow up, I think, uh, you know, might, might work well enough, but not necessarily great. So where, you know, you're doing, uh, an informal kind of follow-up. So if you see here, while this is from the point of view of writing emails, but uh, it talks a little bit about, you know, whether you should be formal, whether you should not be formal, etc. So with a type D or a type, you know, especially if it was a type, let us say, uh, C, uh, you might want to stick to more formal kind of follow-ups. So email might work well. And, you um, um, a planned phone call, you know, might work well. So typically these are the people who expect that level of uh, formality. They expect that level of, you could say, propriety uh, in the interactions. You know, they normally don't connect and form relationships uh, that quickly. And uh, let's go back. I think my final example for today is, yeah, okay, closing. So, you know, closing is obviously uh, the most important of arts, you know, so to speak. So let's take up a couple of examples, you know, when it comes to closing. So now when it comes to closing, so let us, uh, you know, stick with the Aaron uh, example here for a minute. So Aaron is a type T now, and we actually have, you know, specific tips uh, or insights, you know, when it comes to negotiating and closing, you know, with the each types. Now for someone like uh, Aaron, the, the most important uh, point when it comes to closing might be around uh, the proof of impact, not necessarily ROI. A, you know, a type D personality is not ROI driven in the number sense. They are ROI driven in the impact sense, in, in the sense of their ability to visualize how, if they were buying a product that is going to materially impact the results that they're delivering. They're very, very results oriented people. So that is what drives their decision making. If they can see that this is going to lead. Um, so in the case of Humantic, for example, a type T, if they can come to believe, develop that conviction that uh, 
using Humanity AI is going to impact their revenue positively because uh, they have themselves seen some evidence or they have come across evidence you know, uh, from other customers. That is going to be the most important thing for them to say, yes, let's do this thing. Versus, let us say, if it was a type uh, C, type uh, SC, for example, which is, which is different. So they would typically be very, very analytical. Chances that they would want to see uh, objective proof in terms of numbers. What is the impact on revenue that you can create? How did you measure it? Um, where is the objective proof of that, you know, those results? How do you impact response rate? What, how much can you improve my response rate by? So they tend to be uh, very objective from a, a from a, almost a numerical point of view, you could say. So compared to, let us say, someone who's heavier on type S, you know, type S personality, where they might seek, um, they just might look for very low levels of risk. They might not be really very early adopters for that matter, uh, in spite of everything that, that might be there. So they'll typically end up being, you know, the slowest adopters compared to a type I where uh, the most important factor for them might be other examples. The type Ds might actually be put off by other examples because they have so much belief in themselves. You know, they, they're unlikely to be looking at others to decide whether to go ahead or not. So whereas the type I uh, will actually want to see and hear more about who else is using it. What do they have to say about it? What are the testimonials like? So that becomes uh, very, very important for them to make that decision. So, so that's my uh, you know, last uh, example, you know, going back to uh, what we have here today. From a closing perspective, how different types tend to behave differently. Now, as part of, of course, the humantic um, you know, Chrome extension that, uh, that you have used or that you should use, you will be able to get most of these insights in plain English, but knowing what each personality type implies to a degree, uh, that'll help you across every stage uh, of selling, right from deciding who are the customer's prospects that you want to be focusing on, down to how you follow up with them and how do you eventually uh, close business with them. So if, if you're in a closing role, if you're in a prospecting role, then how do you really structure your prospecting? Uh, what can you expect as the outcome from that? So before you pass it all, you know, on as an opportunity to uh, your account executives, for example. So I think I'll pause with that. Uh, let me see if there are any questions. We'll take those up and otherwise this is uh, the end of the webinar uh, from me for today. Okay, I don't see any questions here. All right, then I think we will uh, you know, go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Thank you everyone for joining us on this one. Like I said, this is the start of the series and going forward, we will be conducting more of these. We will also be uh, inviting some of our uh, advanced users, expert users. We will also be in, inviting in, you know, industry experts, uh, sometimes sales leaders, sometimes uh, domain experts. You know, for example, uh, it could be a psychologist you know, that we uh, invite to one of these sessions. So we'll try to cover a you know, wider ground with these sessions than we typically cover from a product perspective and try to help, uh, you know, you as a uh, listener, as a, as a user, uh, use personality insights and humanity more effectively. So thank you everyone for your time.